I'm Gary Rosen, the editor of Wall Street Journal Weekend Review, and we're here today with Paul Zak, the author of a new book called The Moral Molecule. Paul is also the director at Claremont Graduate University of something called the Center for Neuroeconomic Studies. So hi, Paul, and welcome. Thank you, Gary. So um, let's just start with the title of this book. It's uh, called The Moral Molecule. So, so what is this molecule, and in what way is it moral? So this book is about my unlikely discovery of a brain chemical called oxytocin that motivates people to engage in moral behaviors. So it sheds new light on the longest debate since humans have having debates, which is, are we good or evil? And we've shown that when you turn on oxytocin in the brain, people engage in virtuous or moral behaviors. And so, so this is a kind of neurochemical switch, I guess. I mean, how, how do you go about studying it? How do you isolate its effect? Well, it's very hard to find, actually. It's kind of a shy molecule, which took some technical expertise to find it. But we can develop stimuli in the laboratory that cause the brain to release this chemical. And we developed a nasal inhaler in which we can shoot it into the human brain safely. And in both cases, when oxytocin is raised, people are more generous, they're more compassionate. And in particular, they're empathic. That is, they connect better to people emotionally. And we tend to treat others that we're connected to emotionally well. So, so what are some examples of that? What, what sorts of practical expressions have you seen of this uh, hormone's rising and falling levels? You mentioned that my lab is called the Center for Neuroeconomic Studies. And so we typically use money to assess how much people care about themselves versus others. So we've designed experiments in which people are being moderately tortured. They're giving their blood to us a couple of times. They get paid a little money for this. And in the course of the experiment, they can share money with a stranger. And just that decision to share with somebody else causes the receiver's brain to release oxytocin. And then the person who's been shared money with wants to reciprocate. So what it means is that we have an underlying biology for reciprocation. And it's this reciprocation, you play nice with me, I play nice with you, that's actually the foundation for all of modern society. But you've also induced oxytocin um, into your study subject. So, so you have tried to manipulate them directly. And what, what were the results there with these um, oxytocin nasal sprays? Right. So using the oxytocin nasal spray, we can actually turn on moral behaviors like a garden hose. We can make people more trusting, more compassionate, more generous, more empathic. So we know there's a direct relationship between oxytocin in your brain and these particular moral behaviors. And that's important because we have to know the brain does this on its own and then show when we manipulate the brain, we can induce this behavior. So, so all of this sounds too good to be true. It's, it's a solution to the, the moral dilemma that's been with us since the beginning of humankind. Why don't we just produce enormous vats of this stuff and give everyone a straw? Right. So oxytocin is like a thermostat. You're turning on and off moral behaviors, and the brain is exquisitely sensitive to the kind of social environments we're in. So it's not a zero-one factor. It's a little more, a little less. And sometimes, for example, one of the potent oxytocin inhibitors, testosterone, is important. When you want to protect something, you need to be aggressive. And so oxytocin modulates this kind of approach, withdrawal, um, distrust, trusting behavior. So you know, if you're too far in the extremes, then you're gullible or you're paranoid. Neither of those is adaptive for social creatures. So, Paul, one of your more interesting experiences involved your being a sort of unusual guest at a wedding in the English countryside. Can you tell us about that? So I call this the vampire wedding because with permission from the bride and groom, I attended a wedding in which I took blood samples before and immediately after the vows from the bride, the groom, the wedding party, family and friends. And what I found is that these rituals cause the release of oxytocin, which bind us together emotionally so that we have a stake in the outcome of this couple. So these rituals are not going to go away because they have adaptive value in keeping us close to people who are important to us. Terrific. Well, thanks for joining us, Paul. Again, the book is called The Moral Molecule, and it's excerpted on the cover of this weekend's Wall Street Journal Review.